guys, what is up? Timothy Powell here again to bring you guys a scary story I have for this Halloween season. And this this story has apparently not been read by anyone else. So I thought I might read this to you. So again, this is a scary story. So if you aren't familiar too with, with my scary stories, then I don't know. I might put something down in the description about it. So, that your discretion is advice, but let me know what you guys think. So, today's scary story we're going to be reading is called Thomas and Friends The Bad Engine. And if you guys like this story, um, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. Please like this video, be sure to subscribe for more content, and 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 yeah. So, with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into this story. I am sure everyone has heard of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. You know, the, sh the TV show that was based off a book series by Reverend W. Audrey. I am here to share my experience with an encounter with a lost episode that I'd found. It was early February, and I decided to clean up my attic. After cleaning most of the attic, I noticed a cardboard box, which was the size of a VHS tape. I took the box hugs into my kitchen and placed it on my kitchen table. After cleaning the dust off, I decided to see what was inside the box. After opening the box, it was revealed to be a Thomas and Friends VHS tape. The VHS with its cover was called Cranky Bugs and Other Thomas Stories. A wave of confusion came upon my face. Why would a Thomas the Tank Engine VHS be in a box by itself? I then decided to look at the back cover to see what was on the tape. The episodes were Cranky Bugs, Lady Hat's Birthday Party, Double Teething Troubles, Thomas, Percy, and Old Slow Coach, Busy Going Backwards, A Better View for Gordon, and one music video, Night Train. I decided to play this VHS on my VCR just to relieve childhood memories. After plugging in my old VCR, I inserted the tape and pressed play. Boy, how I regret that decision. The episodes were good, as well as the music video. But after the credits played, the intro showed up. Why is the intro playing again? I thought to myself. However, at the However, at the part where the name of the episode was shown, it showed the name The Bad Engine. I don't remember this episode being on the tape, nor even the show. My thoughts were interrupted when I noticed what appeared to be a warning screen was on the TV. Why is a warning screen on before the episode? The warning screen was black with the word warning in red and some white text underneath. Also, next to the white text was a still shot from the episode Thomas, Percy, and Old Slow Coach, where Thomas and Percy arrive at the, worksman, at the workman's hut, which was on fire, before the fire engines arrive at the carnage. I read the text on the screen, which said, Warning. The following episode of Thomas and Friends you are about to see was originally intended to be in Season 5, but was deemed too dark and scary. This episode also contains content that is not suitable for children and adults. Viewer discretion is advised. Too dark and scary? I asked myself. Season 5 did have some dark plot lines and more action scenes, and some were scary. So what would make this episode too scary? The episode begins at the Tidmouth Engine Sheds, with Thomas, Henry, Gordon, James, and Percy, except Edward, Toby, and Duck, being in the shot. I noticed that Alec Baldwin, who was the narrator in the U.S. version of the show, never spoke. Actually, no narrator was present. Instead, all the characters had voice actors, which was unusual. But I, but I just thought this was an early episode made as a test. Thomas was the first to speak. Have you guys heard about the new engine coming today? He said. 
I noticed that his voice actor sounded like Edward Glenn, who voiced Thomas in the 2000 Thomas film, Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Well, I hope this engine doesn't interfere with my express trains, said Gordon, bearing the voice of Neil Crone, who voiced him, Diesel Tin, and Splatter in Thomas and the Magic Railroad, and reprised his role in the All Engines Go 2021 reboot that I didn't like. Or getting my red paintwork all dirty, James said in annoyance. James's voice actor somewhat had a voice like Keith Wickham, who voiced him and any other characters, including Sir Topham Hatt, during the early seasons 13 to 20 in the UK version of the CGI era, before Rob, Rob Rockstraw took over his role in seasons 21 to 24. Maybe I can finally have someone to help me with the flying kipper, Henry said with glee. His voice actor I recognized as Carrie Shale, who voiced Henry through most of the CGI era as well. Percy was the last to speak. I hope this I hope that this new engine will be kind to us. I don't want to be made fun of again, Percy said. His voice actor was Aaron Albertus, who voiced Mr. Bump and Mr. Bounce in the U.S. version of the Mr. Men show. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived and spoke with the voice of Michael Angelus. All right, engines, the, the, the new engine has arrived. I want all of you to treat this new engine with respect and make him comfortable with his new surroundings. Now, with that all out of the way, please welcome our newest member of our railway, 98,462. As Sir Topham had said this, the engine, who was named 98,462, came into the shot. The engine in question was the same size as Gordon and Hit. Gordon and Henry, but his shape was the same as Edward's, but he looked more like a K2 rather than a B12, and his face was similar to Henry's. Thomas, being the friendly tank engine he was, was the first to greet 98,462. Welcome to our railway, 98,462, Thomas greeted the engine. I'm Thomas. 98,462? Instead of replying with a warm greeting, just frowned and looked at Thomas in annoyance. I noticed a look of anger in his eyes as he stared at Thomas. The way he stared at Thomas made me uncomfortable, because it felt like he was staring at me, even though he was looking at Thomas. 98,462 then closed his eyes and went to sleep. Everyone, except Sir Topham Hatt, saw the way he looked at Thomas, exchanging looks of confusion and shock before Thomas goes, goes to sleep. It then showed a scene of 98,462 being coupled up to some trucks, but I, noticed that, but I noticed he had the same angry face from that scene. He then spoke with a deep voice that I couldn't recognize. You better behave, or else you will be very sorry. 98,462 said in a deep voice. I didn't recognize the voice actor, so I thought it was some new guy that Bert Alcroft hired to play the engine's part. Not only that, but his voice gave me chills, as what he sounded like, like a threat more than a warning. Of course, the troublesome trucks ignored his warning and decided to cause trouble by breaking the coupling that attached them to the train. The plan worked, and they came to a stop while 98,462 approached Gordon's Hill. While the episode was playing, I was more confused, the reason being that I thought this was just a regular episode and the warning screen was fake. My thoughts changed after what happened next. 98,462 was then seen with a, with a mad expression similar to Gordon's angry face. As he realized that the trucks broke loose, he then reversed down Gordon's hill. I thought he was going to stop when he got to the trucks, but when his tender touched the, touched the trucks, he kept going backwards. And not only that, he kept going faster and faster. I could see the trucks exchange looks of fear and telling the engine to stop, even hearing them plead. But 98,462 just smiled as if this was appealing to him. I, t I told you that you'd be sorry. Now it's time for punishment, 98,462 said. 
It showed the Snapford's shunting yard where Thomas and Percy were in a siding waiting for their trucks. The two of them were talking about what, what happened last evening. I don't know why he glared at me. All I did was give him a warm welcome, Thomas said. I know. He's kind of scary. What is with him? Percy said. I could tell that Percy was scared. I don't know. But maybe we could tell Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas was interrupted by the sound of a whistle. It didn't sound like any of the other engines, but I figured that it was 98,462's whistle. Not only that, but I could hear screaming, possibly from the trucks. Oh no, he's coming, Percy said. At that moment, 98,462 came into the yard with the trucks in tow, still reversing. Thomas and Percy watched in horror at 98,462 reversed, hearing the pleading cries of the trucks and seeing the demented smile on his face. At the, end, at the end of the track was a set of buffers that were in front of a wall, but as 98,462 approached the buffers, instead of stopping, he reversed into the buffers, destroying them as he pushed the, track, the trucks into the wall. Because of how fast he was going, he crashed into the wall, destroying the trucks. Thomas and Percy were in shock at what they witnessed. 98,462 then pulled up to Thomas and Percy, who had expressions of horror on their faces. What? What's the matter? 98,462 said, as if nothing had happened. What's the matter? You just destroyed those trucks, and then you just act like nothing ever happened? Thomas exclaimed. I agree with Thomas, Percy said. Why did you destroy those trucks? Oh, they're destroyed? 98,462 said, before giving a small evil chuckle. Good, they deserve it for not listening to me. Thomas and Percy became angry after hearing this. Thomas then yelled in anger. How could you say that? Trucks do misbehave, but you don't have to, to but you don't have to destroy them as punishment. I'm going to tell Sir Thomas how what you did and have you sent away like diesel. Ninety eight thousand four hundred and sixty two then supposedly left the yard, leaving Thomas and Percy alone. But moments later, Thomas was suddenly hit by 98,462 and was being pushed towards a set of buffers. When they stopped in front of the buffers, 98,462 spoke sternly. Listen here, you little blue bug. You and your green caterpillar pal are going to tell Mr. Fat, Mr. Hat nothing. If you, if you and any other friends tell him anything, then I will make you suffer the same fate as those trucks over, uh, those, as those trucks over there. I will do the same to your friends if they tell. And his speech was interrupted by the sound of two whistles. When ninety-eight thousand four hundred and sixty-two looked around, he saw Gordon and Henry were, were were right next to him. Gordon had an angry expression, while Henry had a shocked expression. They had witnessed everything. 98,462 said nothing as he left, still sporting an angry face. Both Gordon and Henry looked at Thomas, who was shaken for the whole traumatic ordeal. He didn't say a word at all. Gordon and Henry decided to tell Sir Topham Hatt about what 98,462 had done. The next scene showed Gordon and Henry telling the fat controller about 98,462's actions. The fat controller was both angry and shocked at this news. He then spoke to the two engines. Thank you both for telling me what have happened. I will give him a stern talk about his actions and see if his behavior changes. If not, then I will send him away. The fat controller said. Gordon and Henry both smiled as they went back to the shed. It then showed a scene inside the shed where Gordon and Henry were talking about how 98,462 would be punished for his actions. Just then, 98,462 came into the shed. I noticed he looked angry so much that he looked like he was about to have a mental breakdown. I told you not to tell anyone, he thundered. His voice was deep and sounded demonic. Gordon and Henry looked at him in annoyance. Well, 
Well, serves you right for threatening poor little Thomas like that, Gordon said. I agree with Gordon. You deserve punishment for your own actions with the trucks, Henry said. Then Gordon's driver told him that his express was ready. Well, it seems my express is ready. I hope you learned your lesson. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be sent away. I bid you farewell. Gordon said as he left, instead of insulting Gordon, 98,462 just smirked and said something. It was so quiet, I had to turn up my volume on my TV. When I was able to hear what he was saying, he said, You want punishment? I'll show you your punishment. I had a bad feeling about what he said. The next scene showed Gordon pulling the express S down the main line. Gordon then passed a signal box where the signal man switched the signal to red. Just then, the sound of an engine could be heard, and the signal man saw 98,462 going fast down the line. Why is another engine coming? The signal man asked. He'll probably see the signal and wait for the line to clear. However, instead of stopping, 98,462 ran past the signal and sped up. The signal man watched in shock as he ran out of the signal box and yelled, Wait! Slow down! What are you doing? There's an express train on that line! 98,462 ignored the signal man's pleas and kept going. It then showed a shot of Gordon slowing down as he neared a station. I then saw 98,462 with a demented smile as he neared Gordon. As he, came, as he came close to the end of Gordon's train, I closed my eyes because of the intensity of this scene. The only sound I heard was uh, uh, I heard was the sound of what I presumed to be 98,462 crashing into the coaches. When the noise stopped, I opened my eyes to see what had happened. I immediately regretted opening my eyes because the scene in front of me was enough to make my blood freeze and make me feel uneasy. Every time I imagine this scene, I cry as the sight is so disturbing that I couldn't believe that this was even made for the show. The coaches that were hit by 98,462 were reduced to nothing but debris. The coaches that were in the front went off the tracks but didn't topple over. The rear coaches, however, were the ones that were destroyed completely. But the most disturbing part of, of this scene was the fact that scattered with the debris were the bodies of the unlucky passengers that rode in those coaches. Not only that, but I heard screams of the passengers that survived, and it felt like the people screaming had witnessed true horror. To make matters worse, it sewed some shots of the bodies of the dead passengers, I'm not going into detail on, on, on the passengers because the sigh was enough to make me hurl my insides out, but what I can tell you was, oh, but what I can tell you is that the faces of those dead passengers looked like they were in agony and suffering eternal pain. Gordon was looking at the carnage that unfolded in front of his eyes. He was in absolute horror. He then noticed 98,462, who was in the middle of the destruction, was sporting the same sadistic smile he had. Gordon realized he did this on purpose and became more scared than shocked. Not, not, not. He then yelled at the top of his lungs in horror. You killed them! You killed my passengers! These words gave me chills as he said this. 98,462 did nothing but manically laugh as if this was all a joke to him. Gordon screamed in horror as tears streamed down his face. The screen faded to black, but the episode wasn't over yet. It then showed 98,462 on a flatbed in a scrapyard with Henry pushing him. Gordon, Thomas, and James were also there. Gordon had the same shocked expression from that scene from the scene earlier. Thomas had his worried face, while James had his angry face. Edward had his crossed face. Sir Topham Hatt was also there, looking extremely angry. I hope you are happy with yourself, Sir Topham Hatt roared. You not only threatened my engines, but you caused massive destruction on my railway. You even killed innocent passengers, which makes this even worse. 
Not only that, you have potentially scared Gordon for life. He is now haunted by your odd actions, and yet you show no remorse for him or all those poor victims. What do you have to say for yourself? 98,462 said nothing with a blank expression. That's what I thought. Henry, take this engine to the smelters. Henry followed his orders and took 98,462 to the same place as where Stephanie was about was nearly scrapped in one episode. Stephanie gets lost, the room with a giant grabber. Everyone looked at Gordon, who said nothing. Thomas was the first to speak to Gordon. It's not your fault, Gordon. He did this he, he did this to himself. I agree, James said in annoyance. What happened to those passengers was not because of you. It was all that hideous engine's doing. The fat controller then talked to Gordon. Thomas and James are right. This was not your fault. You did the right thing telling me about 98,462. I told him to be more respectful to everyone, but he didn't listen. Instead, he brought destruction and death to the railway. I hope another engine doesn't end up like him. At that moment, Henry came out of the smelter's flatbed empty. The fat controller then nodded and climbed on board Gordon as Thomas and James left, leaving Gordon and Henry in the yard. Sir Topham Hatt said, If any other new engines start to act like 98,462, please tell them about him and his horrible deeds so that no one else ends up like him. Gordon and Henry said, Yes, sir, as they left the scrapyard. The episode finally ended. I was at a loss for words. I ejected, I ejected the tape, put it back in its casing, and left it on my living room table. I decided to find the reason why this episode was made. I decided to contact Britt Allcroft, the creator of the TV series, about, the, about this episode. I also took some screenshots of the episode as proof so that she would believe me. I received an, all, an email from Allcroft a few days lay later. She said in the email that she was extremely sorry for what I had seen. I found out that the episode was a pitch episode that was made by someone who worked on the show. When Britt and the other members watched his creation, they were appalled and scared from this. The same person was later fired for this episode. Britt then said that, that the person stole a bunch of Thomas VHS tapes and edited his episode into them. He then killed himself after the police were notified of his actions. After finishing reading the email, I destroyed the VHS and put it in the trash. Even though I managed to move on from this experience, I am still worried that some people will find these edited tapes. If you find a Thomas VHS tape and the intro starts after the tape ends, eject the tape and dispose of it. Alright guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this story. Um... I'm sorry that you had to hear this story, but again, if you like it, I get, I'm okay with that too. So, if you like this video, be sure to leave a like in the comment below. Also, be sure to subscribe, and happy Halloween to you all, and I'll see you in the, in the next video. This peace.